Two years ago when fracking was the was the big thing and all the oil shale oil. Well, I learned about that shale oil when Christ when I was going to school like 40 years ago. Yeah. And you know, we could put the microwave in the ground and we'll all the oil up and then just suck it out. And we never talked about at that time the injection um, that it would impact to the oil. How about we need oil? Car sales everywhere. Good morning, people. It's a new dawn. In Vermont, and talk about what it means to be a family, parents, in the middle of our climate crisis. We like to talk about active hope in our meetups. So please join us. Um, you can migrate over here, and if you come, um, if you want to ask me questions about Mother Up, I would love to answer them. On the 350 Vermont table over there, we have a sign-up sheet and information as well about what we do. The one thing that we really want to happen today, we don't want just speakers up here blasting out at you. We'd like you to mingle among the people in the crowd and see if you can find somebody who might have similar ideas, different ideas, and ways to address the climate. That's on a... Uh, death spiral for lack of a better word. We all need to get involved and if not now, when? If not us, who? If not here, where? So let's do it. Thank you. Next up is Rebecca White. So incredible to see such a community of people. Although we're small, I feel like we're very mighty today. Uh, I'm wearing a couple hats. Uh, I work for the solar company Sun Common as a community organizer, and I'm coming to you from the Upper Valley. Uh, so I know we've got a little contingent, at least in the front, of some Upper Valley folks. Uh, the other two hats I'm wearing are that I serve on the select board in Hartford, Vermont. Uh, and I'm also running for state representative for the Windsor 4-2 district. Uh, I've also got a great colleague, Jill Wilcox, who is also running uh, in, a, in the Upper Valley. Uh, but the big thing I wanted to talk about today was a feeling that I've had over the last, uh, I don't know, let's say since about November of uh, a certain year. Uh, and that's a feeling of uh, being overwhelmed. Uh, and feeling like there's not anything that I as an individual or my small community can do to make a difference. Uh, and that feeling is crippling. Uh, and it's events like this that make me realize that I don't have to have that feeling, that I can talk to people in my community and we can make change. Uh, so to help anyone else who has that feeling, I wanted to tell a story of my hometown, Hartford, uh, and something that we did um, that really inspired me. And we've got folks like Laura Simon, who spoke before, who made it happen. Uh, we have an energy coordinator in Hartford, Vermont, that is on our town staff. Uh, and that's an incredible feat, because it means that the town, our citizens, came out to boring select board meetings and showed up at even more boring hearings on the budget and pushed to make change on a really local level. Uh, and we found that it, whether or not you live in the Upper Valley or you live in a small town, having the ability to have an energy coordinator on your town staff or to at least have a resource available for your town is important. And if you'd like to learn more about how we now have Jeff who has saved us more money than his salary has cost us for the year, uh, please come and talk to me. Uh, because that's the little things that make a difference. And it makes me feel a little bit less overwhelmed uh, when I know that there's someone else out there like this group of people who cares and is dedicated. So thank you so much for being here. And talk to Joel at Sun Common. Um, and uh, vote for people who care. Thank you. Thank you much. Uh, also in Plainfield, 
whenever you pass the resolution that Jael was talking about, you'll find that you have some credibility when the resolution passes with no nays at all. Then when you come to the select board, say, well, we've got a resolution here that says we could do this. This past week, we met with the Twinfield Union School Board, and they have decided that they're going to proceed with their weatherization considerations, as well as looking at solar for the school. So you can make it a difference. It takes a little small community gathering, put it together, get the ideas, vet the ones that are good and, the, and are the most important, and go ahead boldly. Hi, everybody. My name is Rachel. I'm a nurse at UVM Medical Center. We're here today to, to collect signatures in support of the nurses, um, supporting a vote of no confidence for the executives and the board of trustees at the hospital. This is the first year ever that the um, hospital has fallen out of ranks, the top 20 ranking. Mostly that is due to poor staffing levels. If we don't have the staff, we can't provide the care that gets that, that quality ranking. It's the, it's the first time ever that the hospital has provoked an unfair labor practices strike. The hospital has never had a strike. This is our first year that we have had a strike. Um, and that is, is directly related to what's been happening at the bargaining table and unfair labor practices that the hospital has engaged in. They have also increased executive compensation to the highest levels ever. We have the highest paid CEO in the state of Vermont. The top two executives at the hospital together last year made $3 million, and they are quarreling with us about raising the minimum wage at the hospital for all staff um, to $15 an hour. Um, and, you know, they say that they really want to do that by 2020, but they will not provide us any proof, um, and they will not agree to a third party um, to make sure that that happens among many other things. We have a list of about um, 10 to 12 items that we're still bargaining about um, to get a fair contract so that we can have a safe staffing level so that we can recruit and retain nurses to provide our community with the best care possible. Um, and so therefore our community can provide our earth with the best care possible. So we are really, it's all one big continuum of care. So we're collecting signatures for the vote of no confidence, our goal is to provide to uh, provide 20,000 signatures at the Board of Trustees meeting um, on the 20th of September. Next up is Bryce from Montpelier and Lauren Arrow from Vermont Conservation Voters. Hi everyone, um, my name is Bryce and I'm a clinical herbal student at um, Vermont Center for Integrative Herbalism. Um, I'm here to speak just a moment about um, kind of the emotional experience of um, facing climate change and environmental destruction and just honor that um, that that is really big and real for a lot of people. Um, I have an event um, that I would like to share with you all that um, is addressing and working with some of those feelings of um, grief and overwhelm and sadness and fear. Um, it's happening next weekend. Um, it's called Tending the Web, a retreat on grief and gratitude. Um, it is a day-long retreat designed for activists, change makers, cultural workers, and caregivers to process our grief for the state of the world in order to be more present, engaged, and powerful forces for change. Um, this workshop will be next Sunday, September 16th. Um, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's um, based in Joanna Macy's work, um, the work that reconnects. It will be facilitated by Abigail Singer, who's coming to us from Oregon. There's also a film screening event that's happening on Thursday at the Savoy Theater, 6 p.m. It's Joanna Macy's film, Joanna Macy's documentary. And also at my, at, at, at my blanket, I guess, um, I, I, have, I have some herbal preparations and some sprays, um, some things if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling sad or angry um, or whatever it is, um, just some things to help help with that experience. Next, I'd like to introduce Lauren Hurl from the Vermont Conservation Voters and just letting you know that she is one of our sponsors today, along with Ben and Jerry's and Seventh Generation and uh, Vermont Natural Resources Council who helped out with the funding for the liability insurance for today. So thanks a lot for coming everybody and I give you Lauren. Hello everybody. So happy to see all of you out 
today and I am the director of Vermont Conservation Voters and um, you know coming out of the 2016 elections it really was a harsh stark reminder that who we elect matters that showing up to vote matters that getting good people to run for office matters and that's a lot of the work that we do at BCB um, trying to recruit candidates train candidates and then get good people elected and here we are in September of an election year we're going to be doing a lot of work in communities all over the state trying to get pro climate action candidates into office because we know if we get good leaders up there at the state house we can make a difference there's so few places at this moment who can make the kind of progress we need, who can demonstrate the bold solutions that we need for climate, but we can do it here with the right leadership and you all pushing and working to get those people elected can push us over the edge. So would love to have you involved. Please get involved. Um, I know a lot of people work on the national elections and that's super important too. Uh, and just remembering that right here at home, we can make such a difference, uh, but it takes all of us getting involved. Um, as um, I was introduced, I am Ashley Orkane. I am the manager of advocacy at Seventh Generation. And um, I have to say, we've got a bunch of our little kids here. So thank you to all my colleagues who showed up today. We have been advocating passionately as a company for over 30 years to address the climate crisis. But we know that we cannot do it alone. We know that even if we reduce our emissions on our own, it's not gonna have the biggest impact. The biggest impact is gonna come from systemic solutions. Systemic solutions that can come from all of us working together to create a cleaner, healthier, brighter future, moving away from the use of dirty fossil fuels and towards clean, renewable energy. So I'm really proud to be here, speaking on behalf of our company in the next seven generations to make a commitment to help push us towards a clean, renewable future and transition not just our beautiful state towards clean, renewable energy, but to be working with, with states and cities across the country towards a brighter future for all of us. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jill Wilcox, and I'm from Sharon, Vermont, and I'm a, a part of an organization called TRAC, Two Rivers Action Coalition, and we are advocating for legislative change on climate. I signed up um, to be to run for state representative in the Progressive Party in Windsor Orange too, because I want to I want to push the climate agenda, and I don't think we're making strong enough or bold enough moves on climate. What got me interested in climate issues was in 2011, I think it was. Um, I was living in the, the same house I'd owned for for 20 years and it's at 1500 feet so I used to go around bragging that I would never have to get flood insurance I would never be flooded because I live on a small mountain well when Irene came the water came running down my property I'm on a slight hill came running down so fast that it flooded out all the culverts well, washed most of the road out right at the bottom of my driveway. So I was on dialysis at the time. And if you don't get dialysis, you have about three days to live. So I had to be rescued by the fire department, taken down to Hartford to the high school gym and in the Red Cross shelter. And I was there with people. I felt guilty because I had my home. I just couldn't get out of it. But I was there with people with really tragic stories of their homes being totally washed away by Irene. And that's when I said, I've got to get involved myself. I've got to do something to advance the climate agenda. So that's why I'm here today. That's why I joined TRAC, Two Rivers Action Coalition, and that's why I'm running for state representative. And I want to urge all of you here today to stay strong on climate issues and to do all the advocacy you can and to help get a veto-proof majority in the legislature so we can override the governor who's taken no action on climate. Hey. All right, that does it for our formal conversations here today. Good job. And I hope that you will continue the conversation with 
people who were at the tables uh, showed up to talk about different things. And maybe you can find somewhere where you can align, put in some volunteer time, and let's get this thing rolling. Uh, I want to remind you that Southern Vermont Climate Action is the prime sponsor of, along with 350 Vermont, of the event today. But do get involved. It's too late to just sit there and do nothing about it. Get your neighbors involved. Do something about it. And think about choices as you go through the world and go through your life. It could make a difference into what car you buy. It could make a difference where you buy your food. It could make a difference where you get your energy from. And it can make a big difference as to who you put down on the ballot when you vote. So go for it. And if you anybody else feels inspired to speak to the crowd, let me know and we can do a little bit more for you. Thank you for coming. Enjoy your picnic and do stay in touch. Bye-bye. legislators 
And then when we do have changing legislation, like our national, our nation-leading renewable energy standard, or our nation-leading efficiency Vermont program, uh, there's a long list, but we need to keep pushing, and legislators in the building could use your help in terms of helping move bills and also bringing your expertise into the building so that we make progressive policies and see the change that we want day after day, year after year, out here in the state of Vermont. So I thank you all for your work. I hope you'll consider the legislators your partners, and uh, I look forward to talking with more of you today here. Thanks so much. Karen Bixler, I'm Laura Simon. We're part of the Upper Valley Affinity Group, and we have a little skit for you about our governor and what our governor needs to be doing. And I hope you all realize that he's not doing what he needs to be doing. Hello, I'm Nosy Newshound from the Vermont Diggit Press. I'm here today at Rise Up for the Climate to interview the current governor of Vermont, who is running for one more term. And how are you do doing, Governor Scott? Well, I'm doing just fine, Nosy. Well, Governor, Vermonters want to know how you plan to lead the state on some pressing issues. First, you vetoed the minimum wage bill. There are Vermonters who cannot afford housing. What are you going to say to those Vermonters? Yes, well, we have to make sure there's no burden for business. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Governor, Residents in Bennington have been concerned about the PFOA, a toxic substance, and it was found in the Bennington drinking water, and it came from a local business. Two Vermont legislators from Bennington introduced a bill that would inform Vermonters who may be at ri risk of toxic poisoning. Sir, in your campaign literature, you claim you are the voice of working Vermonters, yet you vetoed this bill, which could help Vermonters. What did you find unacceptable about this bill? Well, people already have the opportunity to sue businesses. To add any other regulations would be an unfair burden for business. Huh. Oh, boy. Well, that brings us to health care, Governor. Your opponent has universal health care as a campaign promise. With the rising health care costs, regular Vermonters who you propose to support can't afford health care. How would you lead Vermont to a solution? No, say Vermonters know what they are getting with me. I'm a straight shooter. Vermonters already benefit from a high level of care. Okay, well, Governor Scott, immediately following your election in 2016, you attended the Republican Governor's Conference, which was primarily funded by the Koch brothers. Since then, you received $3 million in campaign funds from the Koch brothers. And you're saying you're the voice of regular Vermonters. How can you represent regular Vermonters while taking money from billionaires? Oh, oh look, Nosy, there's a moose. Isn't it great we still have moose in Vermont? <laughs> Governor, just last week, Representative Kaya Morris, an African-American, dropped out of her campaign because she was receiving threats and her home was invaded. Are people of color safe in Vermont? Will you take leadership in responding to hate crimes? And what will you do about it? Yes, Nosy, this was terrible. And the Vermont legislature will probably issue legislation, which I will sign, as long as it does not place an unfair burden on businesses. Well, Governor, I want to thank you. We are here today at the Rise for Climate and Social Justice, I might add. I have one last question. You had said that global warming could prove to be, and I quote, an economic boom for Vermont. You also stated, I'm not sure that there's a financial threat to Vermont as a result of climate crisis. Were you factoring in the possibility of another hurricane like Irene hitting Vermont? Have you considered the cost of climate change to maple sugar producers, farmers, and ski areas? What are your plans to prepare for the refugees you say would come to Vermont as a result of climate crisis? Well, yes, Nosy, Vermont is a happy state. Everyone is welcome here. Thank you, and remember to vote for me in November. You know, we invited the governor, and we didn't quite expect him to show up in the cardboard flesh. <laughs> <laughs> 
remind you that there's a gathering of families as you arrive over here with the Mother Up group, Geraldine, and uh, please, please feel free to come up and hear what Mother Up is about, dealing with families in this time of climate change. Next up, Jake Curley from Ben and Jerry's, and after that, George Plum speaking on sustainability. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, it's an honor for us to be here. Uh, we're really here to support all of you, particularly the grassroots groups doing all the work like 350. Um, you know, we're doing what we can within our business, uh, in our factories, on the dairy farms here in Vermont. Uh, and that's important as is, you know, putting solar panels on your roof and making those little de decisions. But what we need much more than that is we need system changes. We need changes right here in Montpelier. We need changes down in DC. And we can do that when we all get together and we bring our friends along and we really make change happen. You know, at Ben and Jerry's, when it comes to the planet, it's like our ice cream. If it's melted, it's ruined. Yes, I'm George Plum. I'm 81, probably the oldest speaker here. If there's somebody else that's older than me, please come up and give me a hug afterwards. <laughs> I am the, uh, I'm not representing any organization today, although I'm a uh, founder of the Honors for Sustainable Population, because I, early on I realized that population growth is the underlying cause of all of our environmental problems, including global Vermonters for Sustainable Population, which has recently changed its name to Better Not Bigger Vermont. Right. And I'm on that board. I'm also active in the Sierra Club, a great environmental organization. I became very concerned about global warming in 1988. What happened in 1988? Anybody? Nobody. Bill McKibben published The End of Nature, 1988. And here we are 30 years later, and things are just getting much worse. I'm very concerned about global warming, particularly because I have two grandchildren. And I wonder, are they going to live as long as I have lived? Um, because things are happening just so abruptly. And yes, we need systems change. But what we really need is people to change their lifestyles, individual change, to live more sustainably and simply. Um, and I've tried to do that much of my life. One of the first to drive an all electric vehicle, my leaf is over there. One of the first to install a solar, rotating solar panel. Um, many other things. One of the things that I'm most proud of is, although 81, I've only flown in a jet plane once in my entire adult life for recreation purposes. And that was just when we took my children to England. Only once in my adult life. If there's anybody that can beat that record, again, come up and give me a hug, please. <laughs> So we need to change our lifestyles. And I've initiated a pledge to live more sustainably and simply. And it's over there in the corner. I hope you'll look at that eight-point pledge and, and consider signing. You're not obligated, but you, you pledge to as much as your family will allow you to and your income will allow you to, to live more simply and sustainably. So please come over there and take a look at the pledge at least. And also pick up a copy of the wonderful Green Energy Times. I am the delivery volunteer, delivery boy for the Green Energy Times throughout all of Central Vermont. Deliver some 25 bundles all over Central Vermont. Great, great newsletter. So I hope to see you over in the corner. Thank you. My name is Joel. I am farmer, a mother, and field organizer for 350 Vermont. Um, I help um, organize folks for 
for the Regenerate New Solutions campaign. And last March, we passed 35 climate solution resolutions at town meeting day around the state. Um, and so, and we're trying to get the resolution passed again. We have about three towns who are gonna have it on the ballot this November at the general election but we're gonna do another round. We wanna get at least 40 towns to pass it at town meeting in 2019. So if you live in a town that didn't pass it in March 2018, come see me over at the 350 table and, um, and get signed up. Signatures need to be turned in by mid-January. If you're working on the campaign, you will need 5% of the town's registered voters to sign on to the petition um, to get it put on the town warning for town meeting. So um, if you know you're going to be really busy around Thanksgiving or around the holiday season, you should get started in, in October. Um, if you live in a larger town, if you live in a small town and you only need 35 signatures, then you can start like a week before they're turned in. But the purpose of this campaign is to really well, it has three goals. One is to really build the grassroots base and um, to find solutions at the local level to get towns to implement uh, weatherization programs, solar on school buildings, public transportation in their towns, because we need to address this issue at the local level because nothing is being done at the state level or the federal level. Another great thing about this campaign is that when you're out petitioning, you're out there speaking to people who normally don't hear about this issue. Because when we have gatherings like this, it's usually people who already care about climate change that come to these gatherings. And when you're out there speaking to your neighbors and your community members, they may not know really a lot about climate change, or they kind of know, but they're not very involved. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you to get out and speak to other members of your community about climate change and why you're concerned about it. And the more people who get involved, the more, the louder our voices will get. And the louder our voices get, the more representatives and senators will pay attention to what we are all are saying. We elect them and they need to do what we ask. So if we pass resolutions in the majority of the towns around Vermont, they can't ignore that. They need to do something and pass some bills at the state level that are going to help fund these projects, that are going to put more public transportation on our roads, that are going to help weatherize low-income houses, that are going to put a price on carbon. And all these things need to happen for us to win this fight. Introducing Sister Lorian from Vermont Interfaith Power and Light. Good morning. I want to give you a Reader's Digest version of a sermon I preached a couple of weeks ago. And I see that I am joining a chorus, which makes me happy. I am very concerned about what we hear politicians saying when they start debating. They're not talking about caring for our environment. I remember when I was considering voting for Al Gore because I heard that he cared about the environment. And I kept listening, and he never said anything about it. Now that's because the people who told him how to get elected told him, leave that stuff out, wait until after you're elected to talk about it. Now that's our fault. It's our fault that these subjects are not being talked about. And we can change that. And I think that's something every one of us can do by raising questions, by 
by showing people that this matters, and it matters at every level of government. I think even the school board could be involved because schools could plant rain gardens, and that's something that we need to do. But at every level, we need to be challenging people to speak up about caring for this, our habitat. One other point. I'm not sure, but I think that we may be the only piece of creation that destroys its own habitat. And that's kind of unbelievably scary. We don't really need to protect our planet. Our planet is going to circle the sun for thousands of years, just like Mars does. What we need to be protecting is the human habitat. Thank you. Okay, next up is Tony Mukunji from Malawi, Africa. Hi, everyone. Hi. First of all, I'd love to applaud you for coming out today. It is great that you are coming out and speaking out about these issues. These are matters that are important to all of us. But I know most of you are already aware of what climate change is. But I wanted to share a little story about how Africa and other countries are affected by climate change. So, Buya is the only grandfather I know, and I grew up pretty close to him. He lives in the lower Shire, one of the hottest areas in my country. He's the chief of the village, and he looks after a big community of people. He went back home after visiting me and my family, and it was raining. For days, it did not stop raining, and my country started flooding. Rivers burst their banks, creating flash floods that left more than a million people displaced. Most people survived. And we're looking at these people that are dependent on subsistence farming. They became homeless. And the state president of my country was forced to declare half of our country on disaster zone. I was terrified because I couldn't get hold of my grandfather and his area was one of the areas that were declared the red zone and nobody was supposed to go there. We do not have the privilege of having helicopters and rescue teams to go and rescue them but they were stranded there for weeks and because his house is on a higher ground most of the communities had to come and stay there for weeks with him and that's how they survived. For the past few years Floods have become a norm in my country now. Last year, for the first time in history, we were flooded in the city where I live in. And I woke up one morning going to work and wondering why nobody was going to work that morning, only to realize that 500 miles from my house, the entire city had flooded and a lot of people were left homeless in just one night. And the rainy season starts again in November and nobody is sure of what's going to happen for us this year. I'm Taona from Malawi and we are a landlocked country, but I can't imagine how it is like for the other countries that are on the coast right now. Despite that, Malawi is a green, Malawi's greenhouse gas emissions are very little, it's minuscule. Climate change is hitting poor countries like Malawi first and worst, people are suffering, especially children and women. Climate change is pushing people further into poverty. There are increases in temperature and longer drier season, more intense and concentrated rainfall, which has led to droughts, flooding, causing shorter growing seasons, poor crop yields, food shortages, hunger, and spread of disease in my country, where 30% of the people are already 
in extreme poverty. Furthermore, anything that worsens food insecurity is liable to add both migration and poverty. In Malawi, climate change is a threat to economic growth, long-term prosperity, as well as livelihoods of the people who are already vulnerable. And 90% of the people are dependent on rain-fed agriculture. 60% of the people are already food insecure all year round. Climate change sensitive rain agriculture is a major contributor to the nation gross domestic and foreign sorry and foreign exchange earnings and supports livelihoods of over 80% of Malawi who are involved in primary and secondary agricultural activities. Climate extremes and weather events severely erode resilience and adaptive capacity of individuals and communities via declining yields of food and food security. Flood conditions result in food insecurity with significant impacts on the livelihoods of people living in the rural areas. So for you to come out today, that's why I'm saying you should applaud yourself. Because I believe there is no better time for us to rise up for the climate than now. And there is no better people to do this than us. Because it starts with us all. You should applaud yourself for coming out today. It is time to call action and demand our leaders to take action. And those who are producing three quarters of the world's greenhouse gas emissions that are instrumental in causing all this dangerous climate change to slash their emissions and also provide funds to help the vulnerable who are not responsible for the changes the climate is forcing on their environment to adapt. So it's time to save our planet, it's time to save our home, and we need to do this now. Let's rise up for the climate. Thank you, Holly. Next up, Stephen Marks for governor. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephen Marks, and I'm running as an independent um, on the Earth Rights ticket. And what I'm running for is I want to get a constitutional amendment in Vermont that gives the Earth rights. If corporations are people, and we're all people, the Earth should at least be considered a person legally. Um, the best thing I think we can do for the Earth is is to take care of it. We're we're this is this is our mother. I mean, without without the Earth, we have nothing. You know, everybody talks about um, dollar bills, but the truth is, everything comes from the Earth, and we need to change things. And I say we because uh, I'm I'm guilty too. You know, um, but. But a constitutional amendment in Vermont that would give the earth rights, I think will change a lot of things. And one of the things I think it will do, it will bring a lot of young people into Vermont because there are a lot of people out there who, who believe in the earth and taking care of it. So um, I do have a website, um, which is um, marks, the number four, vermont.com. And please um, check it out and tell your friends. Um, I don't. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be over there and I'll answer any questions that I can do. Thank you. Hey! Uh, my name's E-Rock. I've got a table over there with Earth First journals on it. And that's uh, the Journal of Ecological Resistance. And I wanted to make an announcement about the Luce La Vie uh, pipeline camp. Uh, this is a camp in southwest Louisiana. And they're fighting the tail end of the black snake that um, is the DAPL Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, and this is a native-led camp down there, and they're um, calling for help and support. And if you want to check them out online, nobbp.org. That's N-O-B-B-P for BioBridgePipeline.org. Um, and they're looking for people to come down there. They're looking for lawyers. There was just a handful of arrests 
down there that were pretty brutal. Um, so I want to encourage folks to support this direct action campaign against a pretty massive fossil fuel infrastructure pipeline um, that's native led. And Karen's going to come around with a jar if you want to, if anyone wants to put any change or dollar bills or put your whole wallet in there um, to send down to the legal fund. Um, so thank you very much. And if you want to learn more about the pipeline fight, come over and um, pick up the recent Earth First journal. Thank you. Thank you. Don't get to make